Hello! In this video, we are going to cover the basics of using Vuforia on FTC robots. Now, what is Vuforia? It's a program that uses the camera on the phone to track the vision targets to find the robot's location on the field. Before we can start programming, you will need to get a Vuforia license key for your team. They're free, and you can get them by following the link in the description of this video. Just create an account and follow the instructions to get a key. Now to the code. There is a sample op mode that comes with the FTC SDK that offers some really good explanations of how to use Vuforia. It's under the samples folder and it's called Concept Vuforia Navigation. We could just copy that output and use it, but for this tutorial I'm going to start from scratch. I'm not going to explain every single line of code, but I'll go over the important parts. The first thing to do is set up the op mode like any other op mode. Then we need to create some variables for using the code later. Again, I'm not going to describe each one, but you will see how they are used later on. You will also need to put your own Vuforia license key into this last string. The next thing we will do is create a method to set up Vuforia. We first need to adjust the parameters object to make Vuforia work in the way we want. Then we need to initialize the Vuforia localizer object using the parameters object. Next, we need to tell the vision targets object what pictures we want it to track. This string should correspond to the name of the XML file in the assets folder of the FTC robot controller folder. As you can see, there are four vision targets to be used this season. In our code, we need to reference these by their indexes, which start at zero for the wheels target. For the purposes of this video, we're going to make our target be the wheels target, which can be set up like this. We need to tell the target where it's located on the field, so that Vuforia can tell us where the robot is on the field when it tracks the target. This requires us to use the OpenGL matrix class. The underlying math is quite advanced, but you don't need to fully understand how it works to use it. All you need to worry about is coordinates and rotations. We can make a method to create a matrix that takes a coordinate given by x, y, and z, and rotations about those axes called u, v, and w, respectively. Our method will return a matrix, which is first translated by x, y, and z. This will become quite a long line of code, so you may want to use multiple lines. Now we can rotate the object in the following fashion. We first tell it to use an extrinsic reference, meaning all rotations are based off of the world axes rather than the object's axes. We then tell it the order in which it should be rotated, in this case about the x, y, then z axes. This is important because different orders will result in different rotations, which I'll explain more about later. Then we tell it to use degrees for the units, and then give it the u, v, and w rotations. Now that we've made our method to create a matrix, we can tell the target where it is located. For now I'm going to leave everything as zero, but I'll explain what numbers to use later. We also need to say where the phone is located on the robot using the same matrix method. The last bit of Vuforia setup is the listener. This is what we use to find the robot's location on the field later on. Our listener object gets set equal to the target's listener, but needs to be typecasted like so. We then inform it of the phone's location and whether we're using the front or back camera. Now that we have created our method to set up Vuforia, we need to run that method during the init phase of the op mode. We also need to set the last known location to the origin because we don't know where the robot is yet. Then, when the start button is pressed, we have to tell Vuforia to start tracking the vision targets. Now in the main loop, we will write the code to update our last known location. We first create a new matrix equal to the listener's get updated robot location method. When Vuforia is tracking the target, that method will tell us where the robot is. But if Vuforia loses track of the target, that method returns null. Setting the last lo known location to null would cause errors, so we make sure it's not null before setting it. Then we add some telemetry data to say whether or not Vuforia is tracking the target, and also send information on what the last known location of the robot is. Our last known location is a matrix, which needs to be formatted into a string for display, so we can use another method to do that for us like so. Now that we've written our code, I'm going to explain the matrix locations. You first need to define the origin on the field. It can be wherever you like, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to define it as the corner of this table, with the x, y, and z axes represented by the red, green, and blue straws, respectively. The first thing that our code does is set the location of the target. Its default units are in millimeters, and are based off the center of the objects. So if I wanted to move my target half a meter along the y-axis, the coordinates would be 0, 500, 0. Now for rotations. The standard convention is to follow the right-hand rule, meaning that your thumb represents the positive direction of the axis, and the direction in which your fingers curl represents a positive rotation. The default orientation of the targets and phones are face up, with the top of the face in the positive y direction. The order in which you rotate an object will affect the end orientation. For example, if you first rotate 90 degrees about the x-axis, then 90 degrees about the y-axis, you'll end up in this orientation. If you do y first, then x, you'll end up in this orientation. So make sure you consider the order of rotations. Let's make the target face the center of the table. Remember that in our code, we rotate in the order x, y, then z, though you can do a different order if you want to. So we could rotate 90 degrees about the x-axis, then 90 degrees about the z-axis, which would be 90, 0, 90. Now our target is half a meter down the table edge facing the center. Now we can define the target location using the coordinates and rotations that we just came up with. We also need to define the phone location on the robot, where the origin is the center of the robot. Let's say the phone is mounted right in the center front face of the robot. We would need to translate the phone 9 inches forward and rotate 90 degrees about the x-axis. That would look like this. Now we can test our code. I'm not using competition legal phones, but they work for this demonstration. As you can see, the robot controller's camera displays on its screen during the init phase. This means that Vuforia has been set up. 
Now when we press the play button, it will start trying to track the target. It won't do anything until it finds the target, but when it does, you will see some axes placed on the target's face. This means that Vuforia is working. If we look at the driver station screen, we can also see that it's calculating the robot's position. If you get it working, have fun playing around with it. We'll cover a few more things in this video. First off, having the camera display on the robot controller phone will make the battery drain faster, so we can turn it off by removing the camera monitor view ID when we create the parameter object in the Vuforia setup. Another feature of Vuforia is extended tracking. Basically, when it loses sight of a target, it will estimate its location by looking for relative movements from the frames of the camera. It's a cool feature, but the estimate can actually become very inaccurate over time. So rather than relying on inaccurate estimates, you can disable extended tracking when setting up the parameter object. Vuforia also has the ability to track all four vision targets at the same time, but only tracks one by default. You can change the maximum number of targets that it tracks simultaneously by adding this line of code. The last thing that we'll cover is getting the coordinates and angle of the robot. We used a method to format the location as a string for display, but that doesn't give us the actual numbers. Instead, we can create some variables to keep track of the information we care about, which in our case would be the x and y coordinates and the angle at which the robot is pointing. Whenever we update the last known location, we can then update those variables. The location object has a method called getTranslation, which gives us the coordinates in a form of a float array, where the 0 indexes for x, 1 for y, and 2 for z. To update the robot angle, we make a new orientation object and give it the last known location object and other parameters as shown. Then we ask it for the third angle, which in this case is the rotation about the z-axis. Now we have actual variables to use in the code. Hopefully this video teaches you enough to use Vuforia for FTC. The code written in this video is available on our GitHub account, which has been linked in the description below. If you want to set up Vuforia for competition use, you will need to create a new target and listener object for each vision target in the same manner as the example in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.